Ah, you did put a shirt on, huh? Yeah. Oh, I let ran. Sorry, Ray. Sorry, Ray. Thought I thought I let you in a little bit earlier than that. Oh, good. Ray's here. Hello. Hey, Ray. Nice hey, to see you. Thanks. Joke of some sort? No. 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 There's no joke there. Hey, I noticed in one of our videos that that lamp behind you. That's is that new or am I just noticing it? Just noticing it. It's very nice. Thanks. Looks old. Well, it's because our Christmas tree is in the spot where it belongs upstairs, so I put it down here. Oh. Do you have plans to replace it once the Christmas tree goes bye-bye? No. Nope. And why do you have a Christmas tree? Well, because I don't have the menorah lit yet, so, you know. Hanukkah already passed, dude. Yeah. You're a little late on that one. That's why we have the Christmas tree up. Well, oh, back-to-backs. Mm-hmm. Uh, gentlemen, how was the dinner for Ray, your mom, and Bill, your um, future wife, or mistress? We like to mistress? say mistress. What do you call her? Me? Yeah. I don't, you know, I, I, I mean, I'm stepping out on the wife, so I guess it would be mistress. Interesting. Interesting. Dinner? Dinner go well? What'd you get? What'd you guys have? I had the Nashville chicken sandwich. It was delicious. I had a Caesar salad and a margarita pizza. And how many Hendrix? Uh, quite a few. Quite was this the few. old? Was this the old man? Your sister wife uh, raised dad, uh, feeding you shots? Nope. No, they were just going down very, very easy. Mm. Mm-hmm. Very, very. I could easy. actually. I got that impression when I got your you guys idiots video from the dinner table yelling at me for something. I wasn't sure what the bills uh, pick. The bills oh, pick. Oh, yeah, because I got one of my spite picks wrong. Oh, you got both of them wrong. Not at that time. You oh, dumb true, fuck. True. Not um, at that time. The other bit of information I'd like to share with the show, share with you, Richard, is that I found out because Bill is in love. Ooh. He does not let her listen to the show. Ooh. It was a fucking joke. It was a joke. Wow. Was that it a joke, is, Bill? It was Breaking a joke. news. How do you do that? Do you hack into her phone and not let her out? that are getting on iTunes. We're fucking worldwide, baby. You can catch us anywhere. It was a joke. Jesus. Why don't you let her watch, Ray? I never said you couldn't listen to it. I didn't say you said... I never said you couldn't... You She wouldn't be able to listen, but she. you don't want her to listen. I've known her for years. She knows everything about me, so it's not like it'd be anything shocking. Oh, Does the other part... You're in love. <laughs> the other bit of information I'd like to share is remember how Bill was bragging how I have no one to buy for, for Christmas. Well, I made that statement at dinner, and uh, she did not take that very well. I thought about that the last show. That, uh, <laughs> he had said that a couple of shows before, and uh, yeah. you know, yeah. after all of this, all of this, uh, 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 I thought that might change, and yeah. I guess it has. Is oh, she, it will change. Is she into bullets and joints? Uh, yes. <laughs> well, oh. I guess it's not that bad. <laughs> this is a match made in heaven. <laughs> not so much the J part, but definitely the bullet parts. Nice. Can't even say the word now, Ray. It's getting she censored. Likes, wow, Billy censors. I don't like that. I don't she like likes, that one. She back. likes the guns. <laughs> Billy Not talking bad about words. Your legs either. <laughs> Ooh, Zing. shooting blanks. The, the real guns. He must be shooting blanks if no one's come up at this point knocking on his door. True. Must be. Welcome to the Civil Mind Sports Show. Monday headlines, December twenty first, the winter solstice, the shortest day of the year. Uh, hide those guns, Bill. Seasonal depression is a real thing. We don't need anybody going off the deep end. It's going to get better from here. Welcome to the show.
Patriots suck. They're dead in the water. It's over. They lost. Thank God. Uh, I fell asleep in the third quarter. And Took a nice up. shower in the third quarter. Very too, boring game. Oh, it's terrible. Terrible game. Yeah. The whole fucking season was like that. And the Dolphins just capitulated in this. Uh, 2-2. I don't know if we'll get there. But Tua? Meh. Meh. Yeah, they just ran, they just ran the it down their throat, though. Jesus Christ. This team cannot stop the run. Two, two weeks in a row now, they've just been fucking gassed. What, they gave up 280 yards rushing or some ridiculous thing like that? It was incredible. Like they, the Dolphins the averaged not three and a half yards of carry before They're the They're the game. worst rushing team in, in uh, the NFL based on yards per carry. And some guy, Ahmed... Ahmed, whatever they want to, whatever I don't understand his name what is. they're calling Ahmed. It, yeah, yeah, it was Ahmed. M A D. That that doesn't make Ahmed. A, yeah, it was um, and he had what 130 yards coming in total for the season and run for 100. He doubled his total. I mean, you could tell, season. like, like it, you know, Christ. so Patriots are a bad team. You just the bad tackling right from the get go. I thought, uh, you know, we'll, I guess we'll get to Stephon Gilmore. Looks like ACL, but. Even before that, like there was a series of plays, maybe the second Dolphins drive. It was a second Dolphins drive because Jake Bailey, best player on the team, Ray, mm-hmm. pinned him within the five, and then the Dolphins went on to run it down their throats. That's the one that ended in the J.C. Jackson interception, Chase Winovich there. But during that, I mean, Stephon Gilmore was beat on a play, uh, passing the ball, and then refused to tackle like two or three plays in a row, then got beat on the edge. He just looked like he didn't want to be there. And that was the first thing I thought of when it looked like he blew his ACL. I was like, he's playing at three-quarter speed. This is exactly when you fucking get hurt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he anyway, definitely... sorry. Uh, uh, not to uh, interrupt you and go off a tangent here, but one, sneaky one of the worst parts about this, about this season has been we get the trash fucking commentators. Iron Eagle. All, fuck him. Trash I, commentators. Uh, I'm like, it kind of dawned on me mid-season. Like, why is, is this so annoying? To watch? Oh, because the people talking about it don't know what the fuck they're saying. They're yeah, so you bad. You don't get Romo anymore. You get the you get the worst of the worst now. Yeah, even I, I mean, I get it. Like you know, the talk is Romo melted in this this year too. But like you watch the primetime games, it's like you know, you watch obviously Collinsworth. I think is best in the biz with Al Michaels. But compare that to God, the god awful shit that we've had to listen to. Yeah. And I can't get like if I were you guys, I'd be syncing up the radio with Zoe and and those guys on the on the local broadcast. Watch the I can't get it down here because I've done it before in New England. So listen to the national guys are just brutal. Yeah, just fucking brutal. brutal. Yeah, and I like listening to Zolak too because he you know he's he's not afraid to call the team out. You don't he see a lot of that. Cam. Like he hates Cam. Yeah, I mean that's why I like the Patriots broadcast a lot because he's not afraid to when they're playing like trash. He'll he'll throw the team right out on the bus you don't really see that a lot in other like homer like commentators especially in the football aspect of it but it's like you know he's employed by the team and he's getting he's calling out the team from belichick to craft everybody you know and i like to see it you don't see it a lot you see cedric maxwell do it a little bit with the celtics but i love listening to those guys on the radio i just wish the radio and the tv is just so delayed yeah it is you know and that's what the only bad thing but i, mean, um, they're, they're, I think they're the best to listen to in town out of any other uh, local broadcast. Give me Zolak and uh, yeah, they're great. I mean, you know, Zo, his quirkiness and craziness. Uh, but what I'll say about that calling out the hometown team. Watch him. Watch him have a couple years of mediocre to bad play. That calling out the hometown team will turn real quick. They won't mm. be calling out shit. They'll just be excited that they can get in the fucking end zone. Yeah, and, yeah, that, and that and that same note. I know for, for we're a little too. bit on a tangent here. Um, but watch very very quickly the beloved Bills Mafia turn into the most hated fan group in America if the Bills have a little, just a tiny bit of sustained uh, success. The way that they are carrying on and shoving it in everybody's faces, specifically Patriots fans, because Patriots have dominated them for 20 years as an afterthought. They don't give a, we don't give a fuck about the Bills. They've been nothing. The way that Bills fans, my Bills fans, my fellow Bills fans are carrying on, they will quickly become... The uh, the the way Golden State was admired with Steph Curry and those guys before KD got there, and then as soon as KD got there, they they were hated. I guarantee you, same thing will happen to Bills Mafia if they get some sustained success here and keep carrying on the way they're carrying on. That's a tangent, though. Ray, anything else uh, jumping out to you about the game? If you want to talk about it, defense sucks. Offense sucks. Sony Michelle is not the running back we need. We need sweetness back. Cam Newton, uh, this isn't a racist comment, but he should not be under center anymore. Uh, he can't throw the ball. He can't run the ball. He sucks. Get him off this team. Uh, wide receivers, I mean, that was hilarious today, watching Jacoby Myers having a very good game and then fumbling that ball. Uh, other than that, you know, special teams is the only thing that's uh, 
worth watching on this team right now. Best players on your team, Nick Folk and Jake Bailey. I actually didn't think Cam Newton, like, honestly, compared to what Cam Newton has shown us, I thought he didn't look that bad. I thought he had a little bit of elusiveness today. He had a couple plays in the pocket. Obviously, he had that horrendous fumble that got called back. Should have had a pick in the end zone. I obviously I'm not saying he's good or was good. I just thought today he actually looked like he had a little bit of something, like he had some touch on some of his balls. One of those balls, one of those balls though in the end zone to Jacoby Myers was like five feet over his head. If he actually oh, it was had, twenty yards. Yeah, if he had touch on that, that was he was wide open. Jacoby Myers was wide open. It just, in the bucket who was it? Atsi Atsi too in the end zone. He was throwing Dalton he, Keen. Oh, Dalton. it was a Keen. He threw yeah. high and he tried to make a one handed catch. You know, yeah. you put that ball in the perfect place. That's that kid's first career touchdown. And yep. you know, that that changes the game. But yeah, it's fact back to Cam for a quick sec too. It, the running, the fumble, you know, you, you get the ball fucking knocked out when you're trying to fight for another yard, just go out of bounds there. And then you start Sorry, later. Not to interrupt you, Bill, but it didn't get knocked out of bounds. You just dropped it. Yeah, no. If you but go back and look at the replay, he just fucking dropped yeah, it. Yeah, but then you saw it later on, too, after you had that fumble that got called back, and he's still running with the ball out in his fucking, like, not in his body. <clears throat> and he's obviously, I was a penchant to fumble this year. So it's like, you got to tuck that. If you, I'm fine if you want to keep running and try to lower your shoulder. But protect the football. And, like, he just, he's uh, in the sacks. I'm, you know, he took a bad sack when they were trying to come back late in the fourth, which, like, who was it? Heron? Heron? Got yeah. blown up. Number yeah. 75, right? That's a rookie. Yeah. Yep. He got blown up, and Cam couldn't see it. He can't feel the pressure on his backside, and that's a problem. And he can't feel I, the pressure on his front side. How many front yeah, sides? That I'm off of that though. The second he fumbled that ball out of bounds, he didn't. He didn't get back in the field until the second half. It should have been Jared Stidham coming out of halftime with mm-hmm. the fucking ball in his hands. I mean, come on. What is he I, waiting we, for? What is Belichick waiting for now? I don't know. We've talked about this way too much. We don't have to get into it again. You know, throw out whatever conspiracy theories you want. Um, I, you know, the the one theory that I'm out on is that Jared Stidham is not is simply that bad. He's not worse than what is what we've seen from Cam Newton, especially over the last month or so. He's not. Nobody is. Cam Newton's the bottom three in quarterbacks in the fucking league. Yeah, you got to give this kid he, a chance. He's literally not. He, was he ranked thirty fifth in the league at one point out of thirty two teams? He was ranked thirty fifth out of starting <laughs> quarterbacks. I mean. That in itself should just tell you right there. This guy doesn't belong it behind Maybe center. Maybe in football league, they wouldn't yeah. take him. I, no. uh, yeah, so I don't know. It'll be interesting to see last two games of the season, nothing on the line. Does Cam Newton still get the start? Do we still have to watch this slog of a fucking offense? The one conspiracy theory I'm starting to buy in on now is Bill Belichick waited too long, doesn't want Jared Sidham to play. If Jared Sidham gets in there and the offense looks like it decent. can move and decent, then he's going to take a hell of a lot more flack. I can see that a little bit. Mm-hmm. I can see that a little bit. Um, I, I would hate to think that that's the mentality. What a fucking petty, petty, terrible, egomaniac-driven mentality. But Would it surprise you, though? No, not really. I, I would just hate to see it. I hate I've, this whole season. I fucking hate it. It's been a hard season. It's been yeah. a hard fucking season. Yeah, yeah it, it really sucks. has. It sucks. It really has. And Brady been. went back and had another fucking comeback win against the Falcons today. Doesn't look great, but they're still winning. He's still Brady. He's still making the plays. I know he's You're dead to you, Bill, but like you just go watch him play, and then you watch Cam play, and you go, son of a bitch. Fucking A, he's good. Yep. Fucking yeah. A, he's fun to watch. And Cam Newton is a dog he's not a dog he's been excellent in the locker room he's tried i don't even think it's his fault at this point he just is cashed he's done it bill belichick needs to be crushed this offseason until major major reforms are made and if cam newton even sniffs coming back on this team whoo i don't know i don't know it's, it's ugly up. it's gonna be fucking ugly if he comes back get, get, the kid, get kid some meaningful minutes you know now let him start a game you got to see what you have. Cam's clearly not the answer. Let him at least start one of these upcoming games. You have to at this point. There's no the other game. rhyme or reason. The only game that matters. So we're going to have to watch and see if the Steelers lose and what's KC doing. If KC loses, the Bills will actually have a shot, have an outside shot at first place in the bye. They'll be playing their asses off. They still will probably play their asses off next week just because it's the Patriots and Belichick and um, seating and everything else, it's a, it'll be a meaningful, meaningful game for the Bills. Jared Stidham needs that attention. He needs to see that type of gameplay. He needs to see that speed. It can't be week 17 against the fucking Jets. No. Are the Jets winning, by the way? Yep. <laughs> Don't remind me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't remind Jets fans. What fucking 
idiots. All right, so we'll get to around the NFL. Before we do that, Bills uh, officially win the AFC East, first time since 1995. Raymond, did that hit you anywhere uh, specifically in your body parts? No, no, because the last time we've lost division was 2008 when we had Matt uh, Castle behind center. So, yeah, we don't have a quarterback behind center again. So the Bills won the AFC East. So I'm not, not too concerned. Bill? Uh, good for them. You know, I, I, yeah. I don't have a ton of hatred for the Bills. I think their fans are obnoxious. more of the reason. Yeah, they're obnoxious, but good for them. I mean, it's already starting. It's already, it's already starting. starting. Yeah, you saw them all show up at the airport in the middle of the night last night or this morning, whatever you want to say, but good for them. I mean, it's – Does it make best. you feel better that they probably all have COVID now, Bill? Can't wait. Yeah, can't wait. <laughs> That'd be no. It'd be hilarious though. Is that because of that celebration? Now the team falls into like the Ravens Gosh, situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Twenty-three, so 23 players funny. get COVID now hey, because this they is had a my parade. bills. This is my bills. We're talking about. God damn it. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't really. Hear. I, it just. It just hit home how fucking bad the Patriots were this year and how how hard it was to root for them. Like it'd be one, I've said this before. It'd be one thing if Jared Stidham started the season and you're rooting for a young quarterback that shows promise and the, the team is showing potential, but they're losing because of young mistakes and shit like that. We had a room for fucking a cashed quarterback who can't throw the ball and a defense that week to week didn't seem like they wanted to be there. This was a hard team to root for. But he's a good dancer. Come on. I don't even know if that's true. Yeah, true. We've only seen, How about dance. This? How about seen this? him dance in pads. I got to see him out of pads on the How on about the this? His, his hat game is on fleek. I do like his hat game. <laughs> I do like his hat game. It's on COVID fleek. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, let's let's shift gears. Theater of, oh, also, congratulations to me and myself and the Buffalo Bills in winning uh, the cash prize that is yet to be determined on our big loser city bet, uh, 12-month-long loser city bet. I am in a big lead in that one, although the Cardinals are making a push here. Congrats, Bill. Thank you. Uh, that's called premature ejaculation there, Richard, because it's nah, only nah, – nah, nah. A uh, month into this bet, and we have 11 months to go, and you're already saying you're going to win? I got high hopes for the Jays. Uh, the Raptors will be solid. Look, I, I, you know, I wound up. You got a good the city. Ma- the Maple Leafs, will, they will all crush our souls. But in terms of the overall winning, I think they'll do the most. But they'll just lose in terrible, terrible, terrible fashion, oh, like which, is every, every year. Maybe, which is maybe worse. Like the there has to, we have to, we have yet to determine this point system too, but there has to be something for like discretionary loss of how bad it hurts the way that you lost. Like a pick six in the AFC Championship game is like minus a hundred points or something. It's <laughs> for the fucking pain and suffering. I like it. Uh, all right, around the NFL, what's stand, what's standing out to you today, boys? Uh, go ahead while I grab another brewski. Uh, you kind- Go ahead. Kind of, no, 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 no. You, by all means. I know what you're going to say. You guys kind of are mentioning it, Brady. You know, I mean, you're down. You, you just had that feeling going into Atlanta. You know, Atlanta's up, like, 24 to nothing. And you just watched fucking Matt Ryan just melt down under the pressure again against Tom Brady. So, I mean, that's a big – you saw, you know, Brady threw for, what, 390? 390 yards, three touchdowns. I mean, he just – he looked apart. It's a quarterback the Patriots have been missing all year, that's for sure. Yeah. He looked good, man. He looked good, it, like in classic Brady fashion, too, because this isn't mentioned when talking about Brady and the Patriots. It, but you know, as fans, you watched him, especially in the playoff games and in Super Bowls. It was not that uncommon that he started off slow and even sometimes shitty. I mean, how many Super Bowls did he have a, a first half pick? He had a first, yeah, first drive pick against almost all of them. He had two picks against Seattle, and that's considered one of his best games of all time. The safety uh, against the Giants to start the safety game. Safety against the Giants to start in 07. Did no, he have uh, one against the 2011? Sorry, 2011. Um, 2007, he had just had a broken whatever. It, did he have a pick in Atlanta? Yeah, he had two. One was ran back 86 yards for a touchdown. In the first drive, right? Or is that the Rams no, game I'm thinking of? The Rams game. No, no, no. It's first... Atlanta, too. What was that guy's name? Because he broke his leg like the next series. Alfred was the. Uh... I don't know. I don't know. We're going down on a fucking tangent. Either way, yeah. Brady, Brady looks like Brady, 42 years old, whatever he is. He's going to play for another three years. Uh, that move, that move is looking worse and worse by the day for Bill Belichick. Wow. He better come back strong. Uh, what else? What else you got? Derrick Henry is pound for pound the best running back in this NFL. 146 yards today again. Man, playing with boys pretty much. That stiff arm. I don't know if you guys saw it, but just stiff arming any the defender that comes to, Yeah, I mean, this guy, everyone makes fun of the running backs. So how it's a dying breed in the NFL. I mean, you can win with this guy. You could put him on any team, and they'd probably be two to three games winners, you know, plus – 
yeah, with this guy. He's, he's worth two wins. Where's yeah. he creeping up on? I mean, I don't want to go as far as say his all time, but all time, not there. Oh no, not yet. But I mean, he's he he's flirting with two thousand yards. Like he can get there. You know, he's got an outside chance the last couple of games to get to two thousand. I mean, that will vault him up there. Small, small group of men that have done that. What, I just five? look at it and you go, the last guy. The let. Uh, by the way, Ray, can you keep a track on our on our time? Because mm-hmm. I don't know what the fuck is happening. Here. I have um, Thank you. Just in terms of the last type of running back that we've seen this type of dominance from was probably Adrian Peterson. And yep. Adrian Peterson was probably better. <laughs> Fucking A, Bill. Adrian Peterson was probably better. <laughs> <laughs> but Derrick Henry's a fucking beast, man. Derrick Henry's an absolute beast. He's an absolute force. Um, it would be interesting to compare the two and see what you know what kind of career they had. I think Adrian Peterson obviously had. Um, his he's length. more elusive. Like he could the cuts. I think he's Derrick Henry's more your downhill runner. You know, give him oh, the ball absolutely. and just let him run over people. I think Adrian Peterson had more finesse, a lot more finesse. If you ask me, I mean, even just coming back from his um, ACL injury, you saw him just put up he almost broke eric dickerson's record so i mean i I, adrian i wouldn't put him in that category yet but i mean he has a couple another couple good seasons like this i mean he he could creep up there but i mean you think about peterson still playing you know and i mean you look at guys like frank gore too i wouldn't put him in the frank gore category as much i think he had more dominating seasons to start especially for derrick henry i should say i think the longevity you're seeing out of like frank gore and adrian peterson i don't know if henry can get there just because of the again he's the more downhill runner in between the tackles more than anything so i mean the hits are going to keep coming he's i mean he's huge but when you're 230 240 pounds and you're trying to truck people and run them over and you don't have that elusive to get around them you know yeah. your, your career is going to run kind you know of what short. i heard you know what i heard too and that's a, i mean that's a good point you, He'll he'll get in the category of of all time if he's able to maintain because if his stats can catch up and then you can remember him during this time where he was this dominant, that's when you start to get into that conversation. But people someone's made this comparison saying Derrick Henry is huge. Derrick Henry's six three, like two thirty. I'm six three, two thirty. You look like you're six three, three thirty. Thanks, bud. I'm just saying he looked like I don't know why he looks so much bigger on the field, but six three two thirty. Well, you put pads on him, you know he he's bulked up right there. Someone put pads on me, they can hide my fucking. Um, Do you know? Can I just stop you real quick? Yep. Every time you take off Saturday football because Bill's watching it, it feels like I'm back in Mister Walker's class when we're playing trouble. And one asshole has to ruin the fun for everyone else, and then we get kicked out of the hallway. We have to look at our logo now. <laughs> to be fair, Thanks, we were Bill. we were much bigger assholes in uh, Mister Walker's class, literally <laughs> completely ignoring his English class and going in the hallway and playing trouble. But that being said, yeah, Bill, your dumb fucking brain is way too easily distracted. I, you know, I'm it's sorry. a nice – we we have a sports show. It's fun to have the games behind, and, you know, as the ambiance. You know, you just look into Ray's big, beautiful, chubby cheeks and forget the fact that the fucking game's on. It's not that hard. It's not yeah. that hard. No. You, we know yet you're watching it on your fucking phone anyway. Every no, time we see, we see you some I'm jerk-ass reading fucking reaction. email. Yeah. Just like <laughs> – for the first time. No, I just was follow along. It's like when you got the Cam Newton news and your boner popped through the screen. Just like that. Never forget. Uh, any last football thoughts here, gentlemen, as we move forward? Your Cardinals, Bill, might make a push if the putrid Jets could beat the Rams. Unbelievable. Oh, fuck. Here we go, Arizona. My last hope for uh, playoffs. <laughs> Kyler Murray, future MVP. Let's go. On the other side of things, Dwayne Haskins and your Washington football team, Ray, did hey, not a stand fight. a chance. They lost by five. They put up a fight. Man, did they cover week five? No, it was a push. Oh. All right, let's move on. Uh, Celtics preseason game two versus the Nets. Kyrie, to start the game, was saging the court. Bill, when you sent me that text, I thought for sure that it was some kind of typo. <laughs> and then, no, it was just actual sage. He was walking around burning yeah. sage. Obviously, this has been covered everywhere now, but um, like, I, I understand. I understand. Like, the saging thing, people do it. Like, Jalen Brown has said he's done it. No one does it at the fucking court on the game in front of cameras, knowing you're in front of cameras, and then telling the cameras not to watch. Like, just the fucking – just – oh, I oh, hate I guy. hate I Kyrie fucking, hate fucking Irving. Guy. He's so transparently such a fucking douchebag. I love it how Jesus. Bill said this to you right before your set when you were playing on Friday. I'm like, oh, you just ruined that. I had to. Like, it I came know, out, I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> 
<laughs> it infuriated me. It oh, really yeah. infuriated me. What a and fucking you know douchebag. doing it on purpose just to get publicity. Even Gar- uh, Durant was calling him out after the game, too. It's, it's Barkley. I Maybe you were right. Maybe you were right, Bill. Maybe it is going to be Christmas when this whole thing implodes. And then Barkley. I, don't, I know we, we didn't really touch on his comments. It's just eviscerating Kyrie Irving. I fucking love that. I love that. I love Charlie Barkley. Give a fuck, just, yeah. Holy shit. No one, everyone's jumping off the Kyrie bandwagon, not just New Englanders now because we all fucking hate him. It seems like a lot of the media guys – are jumping off us too. What did what did he call, oh, he call them? Pawns? Pawns, yeah. yeah. Well, what did he call himself too? He's like a performer, an artist. He's an artist. Basketball He's an artist. is easy to him. It's the third or fourth thing on, on his list. Basketball is the easy part. It's dealing with everything else and dealing with the art and deal. You know, look. On one hand, I, you know, he gave one point eight million dollars to the WNBA. He gives like thirty thousand dollars a week to charity. On the one hand, I think that he honestly is like an honest to god philanthropist with his money. I, you know, but the, the way that he carries himself is very, very hard to root for that person. It, 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 it belittles the good things that he does because it almost makes it seem like he's doing it just to look like the person that he wants to be. Mm-hmm. And those type, of, those type of people are frauds. They're f- fraud and fake people are the worst people. They're the, the hands down the worst people, except I, I don't know, I guess murderers, tyrants to, you know, uh, dictators and, uh, you know, those type of, you know, the killers of the world. But I'm sure there's a list that we could get to. And uh, you say pedophiles Kyrie within there. Pedophiles probably get up there. Shout Bill's out friend, to uh, you Jeff got Apple. a friend in me. Uh, but yeah, you know, you're in the media spotlight. We've seen these athletes before that just can't handle it and freak out. Kyrie takes the fucking cake, man. Yeah. Ty- Kyrie takes the cake by a million. That being said, Sage might have worked because they smoked the Celtics. I get oh, yeah. it's preseason, Ray. I get it's preseason. Everyone keeps saying it's preseason, but it's not. It's COVID preseason. There's two of these fucking games. The starters played for the Celtics pretty much the entire game except for the fourth quarter because they sucked balls and they had to get back on track. Why? Because they have a real game, a real game on Wednesday versus the number one seeded Bucks and Giannis at the Cupo and they're about to get their fucking shit pushed in because they look like garbage they look like garbage and i'll say my piece and you can go and this is why this is going to be a hard season for him because brad steven steven's system has not changed jason tatum has not made a leap jalen brown has not made a leap and the system does not support the players that they have the players that they have are garbage no one can shoot the system calls for shooting i don't understand the fucking concept at this point six or seven years into this fucking thing it's going to be tough Unless Jason Tatum learns how to beat double teams and triple teams and starts shooting 50% from three-point every fucking night and turns into Kevin Durant, it's going to be a tough season, especially if Kemba Walker is just completely limited forever. Yeah. Now, yeah, Ray, I know you said that this was just a preseason game and for me to shut up, and it's fine. You're, you're overreacting. Shot, so go ahead. Why, why, am I, why am I overreacting? No, it's preseason. You don't have Kemba. You don't have Tristan Thompson in there. Uh, wait till we have uh, our full starting five out there. And then come January, if we still look like garbage, as you've been saying, then I would be worried. But until then, let's just see what happens and see how this team unfolds for the first, you know, they're trying to get acclimated. You got new guys, you got rookies on this team. You got free agents you brought over. You still probably haven't got used to playing with them. You and I both know you play with someone different. It's kind of like a little learning phase that you go through. So let's see what happens come end of January. If they look like this bad, then then we'll get worried. But until then, let's see what happens. Bill? I'm a little worried when Jason Tatum's not on the court. You know, I think he's your best scorer, and I don't think – if you t- take him off the court, the offense is just really putrid. You know, we really need to see Jalen Brown make that next step. So when, <clears throat> when you have Tatum off the court, there's still some resemblance of an offense because right now you're not seeing it. You're really – relying on these rookies to kind of come in and play meaningful minutes especially Naismith like you you really want him to try to pick up some of the scoring slack especially if you can keep shooting but they're in trouble I still think they need another scorer off the bench I mean I like Jeff T but he didn't really show up much game two so I mean you really need the consistent bench scoring especially when when Tatum's not on the on the on the court at all so this team could be in trouble with especially on the bench they need some they still need to add a piece or two on this bench to really start competing in my eyes yeah um so let me let me step back from my initial rage i don't know why the thank you raymond i don't know why the uh the celtics are the team that enrages me this badly i think because their expectations have been high for so long and they've yet to meet them maybe that's maybe that's the case which brings me to my point of i think the expectations need to be lowered 
I know I had him at second in the East. That was depending on Jason Tatum making that step. I don't think he's going to do it this year. I, I still think he might be able to, but I don't think he's going to do it this year. And then to, you know, to your point, Bill, there's still a ton of young fucking players on this team that they're relying on. And until, or if they package those and swap them for a team that is ready to compete for a championship, you know, you're just going to have to wait. You're just going to have to play that two or three game, three year waiting game. And maybe, and this might be a detriment to Danny age. Maybe Danny age looks at Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant goes shit. Those guys are going to fucking own us for the next two or three years. Let me build this from the inside out instead of go spending all this money on, on players on one year deals that are here to, to win championships. We're not there yet. I don't think we're there yet. I, 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 you know, the frustrating part is it feels like we've been there for four or five years with, with the teams that they've built. And it seems like too many of those teams have underachieved. The good part for me is I like Tristan Thompson, his comments after the game I sent you basically said, I thought we came out like shit in that game. And we can, and I came to practice today to make sure that doesn't happen again. Again, this is the guy we've been asking for. He's got a, he's got a ring. He's got a couple rings. He's got a uh, championship. He's got one. Mm-hmm. All right. He's got championship pedigree. He's got the toughness. He's got the grit. He's Marcus smart without the ego and the three point, you know, bonanza. So hopefully he can be that guy that settles them and puts them in a place. I just don't think they have the skill to get there. Um, yeah, I'm with you. They're going to make a move. They have to make a move to, to study to study that team. And just I pray to God, Semi Ojale is part of the fucking deal. Yeah, and the, as far as, like, leadership, I mean, this is what we've been wanting to see for a long time. This is what we've needed for a long time. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it it's more of, like, if Marcus Smart calls out the team after a shit game like this, I think there's more weight behind a new guy, Tristan Thompson, kind of asserted his leadership. This is what we've been, you know, pining for for the last year. We need some veteran leadership, a guy that's come in at one. You have one of the youngest teams in the league with – kind of building around the Jays and even Marcus Smart he's only what seventh year in the league so I mean you're still got a pretty young core and now you're adding Tristan Thompson who's clearly already showing after game two of the preseason why they signed him outside of just his talent on the basketball court the shit that he's saying oh we're going to come here to practice he came out today too and we're he's back at practice he's healthy he should be ready to go on Wednesday so I mean this is what we need this is the veteran leadership they need and this is what hopefully could carry the team and Make them the number two seed, who we all think. Two or three, yeah. Bill, if I were to ask you the hierarchy in terms of locker room presence uh, between Jalen Brown, Marcus Smart, and Jason Tatum, how would you rank that? And not, not in terms of, like, the outside looking in. Just like, the, like the power dominance of Jalen Brown, Marcus Smart, and, and Jason Tatum. I mean, those are one, two, Tatum and Brown, I think. I mean, they're best friends. You know, I think, let me, sorry, to, sorry to interrupt. Let me answer my own question. I think that there's a power dynamic between Marcus Smart and Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum's a third wheel in terms of a locker room leadership in terms of those, that young core. And Marcus Smart being the longest tenured Celtic has this und, unearned um, level of um, confidence that he displays on a nightly basis. No, he proves it the way that he plays. Like we all obviously love the way that he plays outside of his offensive game sometimes. But Jalen Brown, I think, thinks that he is well, he knows he's better skill wise. He probably thinks that he's smarter because he probably is. And he and I and I th- just think there's this power dynamic there that's been going on for years with this young core that have been given so much uh of the Celtics team. And everybody to this point that has come in there as a veteran has not been able to knock Jalen Brown off that pedestal or even Marcus Smart when it comes to it. Kyrie Irving, Gordon Hay- Glass fucking Gordon, uh, Horford. You know, the, the meek Horford, um, Kemba Walker is, is, is a guy that is not boisterous. My point here, long-winded point, is I think Tristan Thompson could be the, one, could be the type of guy that knocks Jalen Brown, who I think is the key piece. I don't think it's Marcus Smart. I think it's Jalen Brown is the key piece to knock off that pedestal and go, listen up, youngin. I've done it. I've been there. Just fucking listen to me for a second. Don't, don't, fuck, go, don't go throwing fucking chairs at Marcus Smart. He's fine. You're fine. Just shut the fuck up and play ball. I, I hope, I think, that's, that's the type of demeanor that Tristan Thompson can take to the team. And I honestly believe Jalen Brown is the key. If you can get to that guy, then, the, then uh, you know, hopefully people fall in line. Well, hopefully he also tells Marcus Smart to stop shooting the fucking three. Play that defense. will never happen. No, I know it won't, but I'm just saying that would be very nice if it did happen, you know. 
That's Brad Stevenson. That's a bigger problem for a bigger day. Mm-hmm. Hashtag fire Brad? Question mark. Uh, yes. Hockey guy Ray, hockey guy Bill, NHL sets their dates. Season is starting January 13th. Trade deadline April 12th. Season ends May 8th. Expansion draft well, July 21st. NHL draft July 23rd, 24th. Free agency July 28th. We've got six crazy months coming up with the NHL. Um, there's a lot of talk of the schedule, trying to uh, work in uh, off days and things for COVID. They're trying to learn from the NFL. Uh, but bottom line is they're about to play. Uh, everything's going to happen fast. It's going to happen quick. Uh, I just want to get your initial thoughts on that. If you want to bring the Bruins in, they are still in on Mike Hoffman and obviously Zidane Chara. They only got 3.6 million on the cap. So uh, in the last year, last word for the show, I leave it to you. Hockey guy, Ray, why don't you kick us off on your. So basically thoughts. I have a question because obviously this hasn't been answered. No Americans could go to Canada right now. So with this Canadian group, what's going to happen with this, these divisions? Yep. Really, so, I've, been, I've been looking all over the line. I couldn't find well, anything saying what's going to happen. I don't even think they've come to an agreement, have they? Most of the divisions are set. I know there is a Canada division, but they're, the NHL is exploring options for all the Canadian teams to actually play in America. That's the first – well, that's the first – sorry, Bill. Mm-hmm. The first option is it's an all-Canadian team and they play each other. There's work – there's um, there's unanswered questions about the Canadian and American governments allowing – Um, teams to cross over so there still is a chance that these divisions will be different come come the start of the season Um, and then when it comes to the playoffs it's going to be divisional based so they're they're doing everything they can to limit the um, travel I mean all the divisions the east coast or east coast they play each other west coast is west coast they play each other Canada's Canada they play each other and then when the playoffs come you play your divisions and then you limit all that travel down to nothing yeah and I like how they set up their division I don't mean to cut you right Go ahead. Conference. I apologize. But um, you have four divisions and you're going to get, you know, a playoff team like in the conference finals from each division. I really I really like that. You know, it kind of goes back to the old ways where you, you, you kind of you seeded one through eight based off record, not just conferences like uh, divisions now. So I, I do like that because you're guaranteed to get one from, every, you know, every major conference. So we're going to it's going to be interesting. I, I would expect Canada, a lot of those guys to play down here. You know, I don't think with the border being closed, you know, the governments are going to allow it, especially with the numbers creeping back up. You know, we're getting ready to hit the cold and flu season, which we're already kind of full full swing now with the COVID on top of that. So, I mean, keeping it region-based would be great. I would like to see Canada just stay where they are and then just figure that shit out later if you make a playoff bubble towards the end uh, when you get in the playoffs and then you can figure out how to bring those teams down and, and kind of compete and then you don't then you limit the travel that way so i mean i i would like to see the canadian team stay up there you know i think it'd be better for them their families you know they're they get to sleep in their own beds and they're not kind of staked out in some city for the next six months yeah. which you know you heard the pastor and all those guys say if th- there was another bubble we wouldn't you know we wouldn't no they're gonna avoid they're so. gonna completely avoid the bubble and they're hoping um by july vaccines will be read, you know, available enough where they can get the players set up. Um, I don't, you know, it, they just have to figure out the minor travel across the border um, down the line. I think that's all yeah. they're worried about. So, uh, you know, the, the bottom line is they've set a date, so it's happening. They have plan A, B, and C. It's happening. It just depends on, on you know, how they, how, honestly, how Canada's working with it. And news out of Canada, I have an inside source here. I can't disclose my source but news out of canada is they're basically running the covid like fucking communism like they are tracking people they are promoting narking on your neighbors they're they are it's full-on government control um so they're not taking this shit lightly that's why you don't have a decision yet um but that's a lot of fucking money the nhl brings in for them in those podunk goddamn canadian provinces so we'll see right uh final thought on this then we gotta close it up no, just Mike Hoffman. I mean, I'd rather them go after him because he's a winger. We need score. Bill's been saying it all along. Our first uh, line is always the strongest. After that, it falls apart coming into the playoffs. So if you can do anything to strong up your second, third, fourth line, I, I'd go for it. Char's washed up. We've seen it all along. Yeah, we don't need him anymore. Go after Hoffman. Yeah, uh, really? Hoffman could be a – sorry, Bill, I'll let you finish mm-hmm. up this thought on this. But, Mike, I mean, Hoffman could be your second-line guy or a third-line guy. He's obviously scoring um, – all Bruins writers have done – I've read how many deep dives on this fucking guy because of the talk. 
a uh, lot of lot of talk about him being a power play guy, but last year he had some good five on five numbers. Regardless, he's probably better than most of your wingers on the Bruins. You're going to have to dump some sh- salary to get him. He's expected to get between five and six. You only have three point six. He might settle for a one year deal, prove it deal for you at three. Um, I, I wouldn't count on that. And if if I'm a betting man, I think Bill, like we've been talking about, there's an internal cap. And your team is set if you're the Bruins, and you know this is this is what you're going in on. So don't get your hopes on Hoffman. And I think they want to move on from Char to see what they have in Vakanainen, and Lazan, and um, Zobrol. So it would it would be weird and suck to see Chara go. But is he going to be your sixth and seventh defensive man with a, you know with a C on his on his sweater and I don't know want to play more? That might just get awkward. So I don't know. We'll see. Bill, last word on this, and then we gotta go. Yeah, uh, just Mike Hoffman, like you kind of mentioned, he's more of a power play special teams guy. That's where he scores a lot of his goals. You know, Bruins really need to add some five on five scoring. Um, you can actually fit him in now, um, even with the 3.6 million, because you're going to have David Pasnack and Brad Marshawn hurt. So you can actually use the injury a designation with um, Parsonak so you can free up that cap space so you really could figure it out later on when you you start getting some guys healthy there was some rumors um, what Stadnika changed his jersey number um, I guess that was Mike Hoffman's number in, in Florida so he kind of switched there um, mm. but he was, he's been linked to the St. Louis Blues as of this morning and then it looks like Char has been kind of linked to the New York Rangers uh, the, the Bruins don't make a move that 3.6 million cap space that's their wiggle room where you can kind of start adding at the trade deadline I don't expect them to go right up into the cap because again if you have to bring guys up from Providence uh, fill injury voids but if you want to move past neck into the long-term IR because uh, you don't really know when he's going to be ready so then you can kind of um, get Mike Hoffman in there but I, I don't expect it truthfully I expect him to go especially with St. Louis you know if they're they're lurking you what know, a they, kick they, in the balls that'd be losing Krug to St. Louis and then uh, losing a free agent to him, not getting your free agent in, um, in Taylor Hall, Buffalo. That would be a, be a tough off season from the Bruins perspective and Chara leaving the building, even though, you know, want him on the ice ray, I get it, but you know, he's been your captain forever. Yeah. It'd be weird. It'd be tough. You'd be walking in and then no Parsnock and no Marshawn to start the season. Yeah. Shit. All right. We'll do more. Games. 56 games. You gotta go yeah. quick. You gotta go fast. Um, we will do more Bruins talk coming up here. Bill, I know that you're thanking Christ himself that we'll get in some hockey talk and yes. get away from the basketball and Jason Tatum is not a superstar. But until then, um, you're going to have to listen to me uh, rant and rave about Marcus Smart. So this has been the Simple Mind Sports Show Monday headlines. Winter Solstice, December 21st, the shortest day of the year. Hibernate, Ray. J- j- Always. Store those nuts in your fucking mouth. Always. Summer's coming, baby. It's yeah. just around the corner. Okay, Gotta get bye-bye. that beach pod. <laughs> bye-bye.